I arranged to meet some racing experts to test out some of my ideas and hopefully convince them that I could indeed have a reliable system. Phil Bell is the manager of Fontwell Park Racecourse. Katie Stevens is the manager of Hereford Racecourse. James Pyman is a journalist and tipster for the Racing Post. Jim Boyle is a racehorse trainer and a council member of the National Trainers Federation. Can I get you to mix up those four envelopes for me? Just give them a mix. And if you can stick these on yourselves, they peel off and you can put the backings uh, in your pocket if you like. Thank you very much. Just put one of those on you each. And if you grab one of those as well, thank you. Have, a, have an envelope too. You've all been interviewed about uh, this idea of there being a system and uh, whether it's possible to predict the horses accurately uh, and predictably you've all sort of said no, it's not, it, it's not possible. I would say that it's massively unlikely but by no means impossible to have a system that would work. A, a mathematician worked out the probability of, of having a system that would accurately predict a winning horse every time is uh, it's 1.48 billion to one, hugely unlikely, as good as impossible, but not impossible, that's the point, actually just massively improbable. So what I'm going to do um, is to ask you to sort of step into this world of, of people here. There are 500 Polaroid pictures, and these are just members of the public, and I'm going to ask you to each go and select one of these pictures. It's just really important as you do this um, that it is a random selection, so please don't let what the people look like, you know, how attractive or unattractive they are. I don't let any of that influence you. Some of the, you know, if any of the names happen to remind you of people that you know, again, none of that is to influence you at all. These have to be random selections. That's very important at this point. What I would say is, by doing this, I am showing you how my system works. It'll make more sense to you when you watch the programme back, and that'll, you'll understand what I mean. Please have a good look around at them all. You'll see they're all different. Take as long as you like. When you've got one, just stand by it and let me know that you've... Uh, chosen one, but take as long as you like, if we'd have a good wander around first. The pictures themselves have long numbers on the back, but don't worry about those for now. Those will be uh, important later on. Take your time. Just put your hand up when you've chosen one and... OK, great, lovely. All got one? Yeah. Excellent, thank you very much indeed. Unclip the pictures, uh, just take them off the, off the string. There's a couple of little pegs on each one. Lovely. So bringing your picture with you, what I want you to do, not quite yet, when I tell you to, is to come and stand on one of these four black spots that there are here on the, uh, on the ground. So if you come and do that for me now, any one of these four. Excellent. Thank you very much indeed. So there are 500 pictures there. You've each got one. You've come back and stood on one of these spots each, thus putting yourself in a, um, in a different order um, and uh, chosen large... I mean, it is by chance. It is random, apart from the fact that whoever would have... Probably whoever was closest, whoever took a picture from closest, would have had the choice of any one of the four to stand on. Probably the, who was last to come in? I was last. Yeah, so you, you didn't have any choice at all. The order you put yourself, if you look at your stickers, is one, three, four, two. Yes? And you're happy that that is... If you can just hold on to that for a second for me. You're happy that that is a randomly, seemingly unpredictable order that you would, that you would come and stand in. Yes? OK. That. Just open up the, the red envelope that you saw it was hanging there all along and just read out what it says in there. The order you'll stand in will be 1342. 1342. Turn it around, show the camera. 1342, the order that you've, that you've ended up standing in. Excellent. Thank you very much. Congratulations. A seemingly impossible thing to predict, but the point is, it's not impossible. It's, not, it's, it's highly improbable, but not impossible. All right? Now, you're all odds experts, so what are the odds of me predicting, knowing in advance which order you were going to stand in? One of you has a choice of four. The next person has a choice of three, the next one two, the next one one. The answer is four times three times two times one, which is uh, 24. One in 24. That's the improbable odds of me knowing in advance which order you were going to come and stand in, all right? Not impossible, just highly improbable. OK. Next, uh, if you just take the pictures and just... If you turn them around and show the cameras just so we can see uh, who all these people are. 
let's, let's get the names as well. Jenny Pringle. Jenny Pringle, thank you. You can just show the camera. Peter Burgess. Peter Burgess. Carl Smith. Carl Smith. Jane Baker. Jane Baker. Excellent, okay. So, sorry, so Jenny Pringle, your, your full name is? James Pyman. Pyman, so your initials are JP. JP, yeah. And the initials of this woman are also? JP. Are also JP. Your name is? Phil Bell. Phil Bell, and show us? Peter Burgess. Same initials, PB, yes? Your initials, do they match? KS, Katie K Stevens. Katie Stevens, and what's that, Carl Smith? And your full name is Jim? Boyle. Jim Boyle, JB, all right? So your initials match the initials of the photographs that you picked, and please have a look around. None of the other initials match any of your names, all right? Seemingly impossible for this to happen. But it's not impossible, it's just highly improbable, yeah? What are the chances of that happening? There are 500 pictures, so the first person to take one has a choice of 500. The next person doesn't quite. The next person only has a choice of 499 because one of them's just been taken. And the next person has a choice of 498. And the next one, 497. So that number, 500 times 499 times 498 times 497, gives you the probability of you picking the Polaroids, the only Polaroids that have the same initials that match yours. And the, who mixed the envelopes at the beginning? That was you. So you mixed the envelopes, uh, you handed them out, you each took one. If you open them up, take out what's inside. In fact, wait, you do yours first for me, just so we can get this on camera. Can you open yours up? Recognise the picture? It's a picture that matches the Polaroid that you took. That is Jenny, was it Jenny Pringle? Jenny Pringle. Jenny yeah. Pringle. Do you want to take yours out as well, Phil? Hopefully that matches the one that you've just picked. And Katie? Excellent. And you? And you'll do the same for me, Jim? Is it the same? Can you just hold them up with the pictures as well? Just fantastic. You pick the ones that match the envelopes that you mixed and took at the beginning. Again, the chances of that, impossible. Seemingly impossible. <laughs> but the same odds. It's 500 times 409 times 408 times 497, which means if you just keep hold of your Polaroids, but just drop everything else on the floor just by the, the spots and rows, just keep hold of the little Polaroids. The chances, what are the chances of all of that happening? The chances of me knowing where you were going to stand, which pictures you were going to take, the uh, initials matching up and matching what you picked at the random envelopes at the beginning. If you come forward for me, if you come back where you were, if you put yourselves back into one, two, three, four order, so one, two, three, four, and I'm going to give you a, uh, I'm going to just give you a, a uh, calculator there. The chances of all that happening is, it's 24 times this here. So if you do, I'll do 500 times 499 times 498 times 497. Anybody watching this at home with a computer or a big calculator might want to do this. Work out what that is for me and then multiply that by 24. The answer I can tell you is 1482065. Doing this? 928000. Is that the correct number? That's the correct number. That's the odds of all of those things happening. Not impossible, just massively improbable. One last thing. If you just hold the faces together so the camera can see, just hold the Polaroids up. And just bring them together a little bit. Excellent. I did say there were numbers on the back, not to pay any attention to them yet. All right, now I'm going to turn these around. Have a look at them on the back before I turn them around. 1482 065 928 Zero, zero, zero. You pick the Polaroids that had the numbers on the back that make up the odds of all of that having happened. And that odd is 1.48 billion is the same odds as this system existing in the first place that allows me to break the horses every time. Not impossible, just massively improbable. Thank you very much. Something for you to think about. <laughs> Cheers. Thanks for taking part. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. <laughs> Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very Katie, much. Thank you very much indeed. Excellent. I shall leave you with those numbers. Cheers. Mesmerised. I can't believe what I've seen, really. I'm absolutely flabbergasted. I was, I was trying to t turn the numbers over in my head and work out, as Darren was going along, what the probability was. I quickly got lost, and the number just got bigger and bigger and bigger. It, it, you know, it's, it's just astonishing, I think. Uh, if he wants to come and work for the racing post, then I'm sure there'll be a job offer for him. I mean, I think if, if horses are as predictable as, as humans, then Darren's on to an absolute winner. My opinion has changed. I thought, I thought it was pretty much impossible. And I'm now curious to know what he's come up with. I said initially that it depends what side of the stable the horse comes out in the morning, but I think Darren would probably know. 